Hello everyone! Today I'm taking a look at Below the Stone, which is available on Steam and the Epic Store on Early Access. Below the Stone allows you to take a dwarf deep into the caves where you can mine, fight monsters, and explore the various biomes and enemies therein. This game uses some roguelike features in that if you die you lose everything on your dwarf, but you're able to bank items from previous runs and thus prepare backup supplies for when you do die. That sounds simple and interesting enough, but how does it play? Overall, the gameplay is very fluid, and after a few initial deaths, uh, getting used to how the combat flows, I was able to do many runs without dying. After a short initial and unskippable tutorial, I should add, you'll start each run from a central hub where you have access to quests, crafting, and banking. Each time you go on a run, you have to pick up at least one quest, and you can pick up to, up to three quests. If you complete at least one quest, you'll be able to call down an extraction pod. The extraction pod requires that your dwarf stand on a small zone while waves of monsters come rushing at you. You have to survive for maybe 30 to 45 seconds, I didn't measure it, until the drill finally arrives and hopefully uh, squashes anything that was chasing you. If you extract to that point, you will earn one reward chest for each completed quest. The first chest is really more of a sack in only ever rewards coins, but you can also get other things for like resources, or weapons, or armor from the other two chests. So back in the central hub, you can then bank your items. You can use your forge to make new ingots and then craft weapons or armor. Or you can sell your supplies to the goblin merchant named Imogen. Yes, the goblin's inventory does occasionally change, and it may include higher grade items that you might be able to, you might not be able to craft yourself. So it's definitely worth checking uh, every run. There's also a witch that will help you craft a few potions from your ingredients, as well as a banker where you can buy yourself a large number of bank bolts in order to store your piles of loot. Lastly, there's also a cloaked figure in the corner, but I wasn't able to get much out of them beyond the plea for not turning them into the guards. I didn't see any guards, but okay. The hub space has plenty of room for additional NPCs, and the game's description notes that we'll be able to find and rescue additional NPCs that will aid in our journey, such as a necromancer and probably a chef. But as of the time of the of the review, I haven't found any of them, so I suspect none of them are in the game, although I could just be super unlucky. The game's combat is fluid, fast and fun, as I said. The game features a number of different weapons, uh, both conventional things like swords and axes, and unconventional things like ladles and torches. In fact, the torch is particularly effective due to how fast it swings and its ability to set things on fire. I also found a blunderbuss that uses tin ore as an as ammunition, which was actually a relief at that point because I had completely stopped mining tin due to how, much, how plentiful it is. In fact, you just need a few runs before you'll find yourself being a lot more choosy about what you pick up and what you leave behind as you run out of inventory space. As you complete runs, you'll be able to craft better picks that allow you to mine ore that is otherwise not mineable. You'll also be able to craft better armor that allows you to take less damage from attacks. The armor can make it much easier to survive larger fights in confined spaces and where it's difficult to avoid being hit a few times. And that said, there are some enemies that can do a lot more damage than you'll expect once you get used to what the damage mitigation from the armor, so do be careful. Each biome has its own set of monsters that inhabit it, and certain resources are only available within specific biomes. So far, I've only come across maybe five different biomes. Uh, I'm not sure if there are actually more available. The game's description notes that the caves are layered, and each progressive layer is more difficult and gives you access to additional biomes. Uh, apparently these layers can be accessed by defeating a final dungeon for the layer, but it's not clear how you go about finding that dungeon. If you run around and extract yourself after your bag is full, or if you complete the quests, uh, 
I'm not sure that you'll ever find it because there's no signposting that tells you how to get to the dungeon if it exists. In any case, I never found it. So this is a perfect example of the reasons why it might be a good idea to hold off on buying this game. Overall, I do think the game is fun and it offers a lot of promise when it all comes together. But right now, you're going to be left wanting more after just spending a few hours with the game. That's because you'll start to feel all of the missing systems. There are enough things in the game that you can sort of feel the outline of what's not there. For example, you can loot a variety of items that seem to be made for a cooking system. But there's And there's even a kitchen in the hub. But I'm not currently able to cook anything. I presume it's because I haven't found the chef NPC. Uh, but I'm not actually sure if they're, if they're in the game. Even if they were in the game, there's no way to ensure that I'll find them. And there's no way to make this a specific goal. Due to the procedural nature of each run, the caves change each time you go in them, and the biomes don't seem to be laid out in any kind of logical fashion. For example, in some games, you just dig down in order to find a more difficult layer. But in Below the Stone, you can dig in all directions, and they all seem equal in terms of progression. There is no obvious signposting to tell you which way to go in order to increase the challenge you face to find better material. You just wander around blindly until you stumble on something interesting. At some point, you'll even stop caring about finding any material that you've already found and stockpiled. And reaching that point, but only being able to find better loot by pure chance, gets old pretty fast. That brings me to the last thing to consider, which is the price of the game. Right now the game costs $20, which in my opinion is a bit high for the game for what the game offers currently. The main reason for that is that there are so many other games that cost the same or less that offer a lot more content. That said, if you do pick it up from the Epic Store right now and use the Epic coupon on it, it gives you 33% off and that makes it a lot more reasonable. In conclusion, I think Below the Stone promises to be an interesting game when it's all there, but the experience needs to be a bit more refined than simply throwing you into a procedural cave and wishing you luck. As the player, you should be able to have more control on how to progress the difficulty and direct the flow of the game, and that piece seems entirely missing right now. Additionally, with so many game features missing entirely, either because you don't find the relevant NPC during the, your gameplay, or because they're just not implemented yet, you'll quickly be left wanting more. Right now, I would only recommend the game if you're willing to gamble on the developer finding the secret sauce to make the game work eventually. Thank you for watching, and I'll catch you on the next one.